very much. This is the four man rush. Hello, Panther fans, and welcome to another podcast of the four man rush. I'm your host, Timmy VO, here with Will and Kevin. Glad you're here with us uh, for our uh, Four Man Rush podcast. And if you have not subscribed to our channel on YouTube, please do. Uh, we would appreciate you so you can get that notification. And uh, uh, just because, you know, the season's wrapping up doesn't mean the Four Man Rush is. Uh, there's there's going to be a lot of content coming out in, in terms of, you know, uh, getting ready for the combine and uh prospects and you know, of course the draft coming up later on um in in, uh, in the new year and all that good stuff so make sure you subscribe ladies and gentlemen we really appreciate you oh and uh, by the way hello to your hats folks four man rushes on the scene will tell us how you feel about a winning environment and what what, what did coach rule uh, touch on in terms of that during his interview He said a lot of good things in that interview. At first, I think he hit it, knocked it out of the park because I think the media was kind of giving him a lot of questions about why it's important to win right now and why, you know, they're not going to shut guys down and try to lose on purpose to get a higher draft pick. Now, I mean, I get it from the fans' perspective why you want a higher draft pick. You assume the higher you are, the more chance you have to get a better player. I think in general, though, fans value draft picks a lot more than people in the building do. I think it's a little bit, you know, a little bit too much. I think draft picks are tangible, something you can see versus as, you know, winning culture and having that locker room leadership, winning culture, having that environment to try to get better every day and build upon something long term isn't really something you can see happening every day. So it just seems like it's kind of corny and cliche, but I mean, it's something necessary that every winning organization has. So I think what Rule was getting at was that just exactly that, you know, having trying to build a culture of winning, trying to prepare his team to be able to compete and win in December. Because if you look at the Panthers since 2015, they haven't done well in December, except I think one year, you know, we, know the infamous 2018 where we ended on a long losing streak before we had that meaningless game against the Saints backups in the finale, <laughs> right, which we kind of ended on a somewhat of a positive note. And then last year with the Kyle Allen and Will Greer show, we were terrible in December and finished bad and ended up, what, 5-11? and 11? So this mm-hmm. hasn't been a good football team in December. It's the reason why the team's been staying home year after year. So I think with this young team, you know, consistent of all of these rookies, these undrafted free agents, these first and second year players, get them used to playing and winning in December and competing in meaningful football games. Because even though we're not going to the playoffs, our opponents are. They're trying to win their division and make that playoff run. So it's still a playoff atmosphere when we're going up against them. You know, we just beat the Washington football team. They're competing for a division title. We played Green Bay, who's competing for a one seed. Now we're competing against the New Orleans Saints this week, who still have the opportunity to compete for a one seed. So these last three weeks have been a playoff environment for these young players. So although they're not going to be playing on wild card weekend or in the divisional round, they're still getting experience with December, you know, cold weather playoff football. And being able to win these games and compete will go a long way in their development and growth as professionals. I mean, I know we as fans, we're not suiting up in pads and helmets. We can't relate to that, you know, but you just got to understand what they're trying to do inside the building. The people that matter, that actually make decisions and are trying to build a culture of winning and competing and playing hard. What they're trying to build, make, you know, what do they want the Panther logo, the Carolina Panther to be all about? You want to be a team that shows up every day, competes hard and tries to win. Or do you want to be a team that's just known to roll over and, you know, lose for draft picks and maybe next year? And that's just going to rub off on a lot of guys. It's going to turn a lot of free agents away. Guys aren't going to want to stay. Guys in the locker room are going to know that, you know, once you give them that idea that competing hard isn't acceptable and the organization prioritizes things other than winning, I mean, that's going to affect their mindset. And you're going to continue to stay 
a bottom franchise for a number of years. So any day of the week, I'll take trying to build a winning culture over, you know, two to three draft slots. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you uh, listener, how many of you listeners are uh, um, are familiar with the game of football in terms of a competitive um, competitive sport. I, you know, actually play the game, man. But I I can't remember anybody who enjoyed losing. <laughs> so so I mean, it, it it matters, man. Kevin, what's your, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, well, my thoughts has always been, you know, someone like you just said that's played competitively. Uh, football, um, uh, of course, you know, high school years or whatever, like, there's nothing like winning, man. Like, <laughs> a win just solves so much. To know that you put in so much effort in six days and all the, the – your happiness will be determined in a three-hour window, you know, to invest that much time, blood, sweat, and tears to – have such a small time frame to determine, you know, the happiness of it. That's a lot, you know. What I'm saying, and and I think a lot of fans get this misconception because these players make an X amount of money. Oh, well, it don't bother them. You know, they're still rich at the end of the day. That's bullshit. That is such bullshit. Perfect example is each job that each one of us have. If we keep having bad days doing a job that we love, that we work so hard to do. If you're if you're not meeting the, the overall goal and objective, how, how much fun is your job going to be for you? Right. You know, regardless of, you know, how much money that you make, if this is something that you love to do, then you want to see yourself be successful at it. And I just think that, you know, just from just from interactions through social media, I just think that our fans have been misguided by fantasy football. Uh, you know, these, um, you know, these online, you know, Madden couch coaches and gyms, you know, with this, you know, with these beliefs and concepts that that are being displayed because, I mean, it's just it's just mind boggling to think that learning to lose purposely is going to make your team better. How? how? How does that work? You know, so. Uh, but for me, I mean, I was just looking over some of the things that Matt Rue was saying. He was, you know, speaking, you know, just some things that um, not to go over what Will just said, but specifically he's speaking after the game, talking about how you don't want, you know, you want to establish winning because, you know, you have an undrafted. He, he mentioned our punter, an undrafted, uh, you know, rookie, um, Charlton, our punter. And he said, how do I look telling him, hey, don't punt the ball deep. You know, we're trying to lose. Get him good field position. <laughs> you know, to he was para, he was para, I'm paraphrasing, but he was standing along the lines. He's like, you know, he was a key contributor today because he kept pinning the Redskins. I'm excuse me, uh, the Washington football team, <laughs> you know, deep in their territory, which allowed that defense to take advantage and to and to dictate tone. That's mm -hmm. that's important, you know. And as as someone that you know loves to draft and 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 can understand why fans have that belief that a higher draft pick means getting a higher quote better grade of player which will lend to winning think about this for a second the team that's got the number one that's sitting in the seat for the number one overall pick again is the Jacksonville Jaguars throughout the last 10 years you know they've had a top 5 pick 6 times Bruh. And outside of what a couple of years, what, two or three years ago, when they gave uh, had a run where they went to the uh, AFC Championship uh, against New England, I think in what twenty seventeen, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, outside of that that year, what has what has it netted them? You know, all those years of top five picks. You know, hey, so four, four net's not even on the team anymore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Before his Ramsey. contract was up, what's the cornerback's name? Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, he's 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 West Coast in it. Before his rookie contract was up, hmm. and also, you know, this this misconception that higher draft picks will turn into winning. That's that's a bunch of crap. Because look at the teams that's consistently winning every year. That's in the playoffs. That's at the you know. Drafting in the twenties, uh, the the mid to late twenties and, and the thirties, 
you know, your your New England Patriots, your Pittsburgh Steelers, your your Green Bay Packers. Uh, you know, these teams are, you know, f- for several years are constantly drafting near the bottom quarter of the NFL draft order. So the key is, you know, trusting your scouting department and your front office to be able to determine does this player's natural abilities allow us to put a scheme in place to where he's going to help this team. Thank you very much. This is the four-man rush. 